Book of Psalms, chapter 37, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Psalms. Psalms, chapter 37. Again, we're going to honor our graduates after service. Who, who we got here for graduates? I think we have two. Is there another one here? Stand up, graduates. What's up? Enchilada? Amen. All right. Amen. Since she was a baby. That's a, I'm the only preacher you've known. Bless your heart. I pray you when you graduate, you're able to fly a little bit and go, go experience some other preachers and realize just how wonderful I am. <laughs> I loved you a long time, kid. Look at you graduating. That's amazing. That's good stuff. So we're out of service. Uh, Pastor Joseph will come up, and we're going to bless them and pray over them. So in thinking of that, as we move toward it, I think we, what do we have, Pastor Joseph? Five graduates in the New Caney? seven in New Caney uh, out there that are going to be graduating. So that's nine graduates that are going to be going out. And because of that, when you preach a word that, I, and look at me, ladies, th this, a lot of this is for you too, but I have to deal with the whole congregation here. But I want you to take this personal today. So if you take notes on your phone while you're trying to text other people, write some of this down. Would you do that? The book of Psalms, are you comfortable? Psalm 37, verse 21. The Scripture says the wicked borrows. The wicked borrows and, pay, and doesn't pay again. But the righteous shows mercy and gives. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they shall be cursed of him that shall be cut off. Now, this is uh, David speaking, King David. And he says, verse 23, and I love this, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Now, when you read your Bible, understand this. When it says he, it can also be she. All right? Sister, you can grab this promise as good as any. We're not going to have no gender fights up in here. Hey, Amen. You already know how I stand. When you get to heaven, heaven knows your name. You realize that? When Moses and Elijah came back to earth... During Mount Transfiguration, they recognized him, Tommy, as Moses and Elijah. Those were their earthly given names. The only one that has a right to change your name is God. If your name was Saul, he called you Paul. If your name was Simon, he called you Peter. All right? So when you get to heaven, heaven knows your name. Do not change your name without God's permission. Because you might get to heaven and God yells, John. And you go, my name's Joni. And he said, get out of here. I didn't know you. Amen. Okay? Just going to throw that out there real quick for some of you that need a little fodder to deal with. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall. Oh, my goodness. You know, there's failures in this life. And getting back up again is so important. Amen. He shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I've not, and I love what David said. I've been young, now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Powerful statement. The steps of a good man. Are, the word there is commencement. What you two are going to go through is a commencement in life. You're going to, and it's, it's wonderful because you think it's the ending of something. Actually, it's not the ending of anything. If I could tell you this, you are leaving a revelation, which is the ending of a 12 years of, of school. And, you know, I had 12 years of school. I didn't get uh, pre-pre-K, pre-K, pre-kindergarten. I didn't get any of that. I didn't want to go to school until I had to. So at 8, I went to first grade. You are leaving a revelation of ending to enter a Genesis, which will be a beginning. You're going to start over again to head to another revelation, which is another ending. And this is the way life revolves and goes around. And, uh, Sam Keen said, I've, I've learned one important thing in my life, how to begin again. I want to tell you something. You can put your name where Sam's name is. Because many of you began again. I can put Jerry Hovatter right there because I've had to begin again, again to start over. The beginning is the most important part of the work. How you begin will determine how you end. Your genesis determines your revelation. How you start is how you end. When my daughter barrel raced, I told her over and over, if you knock that first barrel over, you'll ruin the rest of your race. Make sure you get the first barrel. Then that will help you with the other three. She learned that. Your genesis is so important in life. Father, I thank you for the Word of God. Let it have its part in our lives. Let our hearts be open to hear. You're a good, good Father. You're perfect in all of your ways. Embrace us today. Speak to us in Jesus' name. And everyone said.
Amen. God bless you. you. May be seated. I want to speak out today about stepping out. First, it said the steps of a good man are ordered. Stepping out, but blessings are optional. Everybody say blessings are optional. See, this is the issue. We all think because we're saved or we know God or know somebody who knows God, we'll always be blessed. But the issue is a lot of times blessings are optional in our life. It has to do with will you get up again? Will you get up again? Because if you stay down, you can't stay blessed. So you got to get up. Everybody say get up. So a good man. A good man's steps. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Blessing depends on that. Ever been through a drive through and they got your order wrong? You ordered something with mayo, and you got it with mustard, and it ruined the rest of your day. They order. The steps of a good man are ordered. When God orders your steps, he prepares things for you. He, he's fitted you. He's fashioned you for this. And there may be times that that fitting and fasting, fashion is not so easy. Joseph, the Scripture tells us of the man Joseph, that uh, he used to phrase to his brothers, what you meant for bad, God meant for good. Amen. So God turned it around. There are things you go through in life that if you give God time, he can turn a mess into a message. He can turn that thing about around for you. Steps denote progress. You can have movement without progress. We have rocking chairs and boat churches. You can rock all day and not go anywhere. And I, I believe we got to keep moving. Can I get an amen? Amen. Just keep moving. So the steps of Abraham, I'm going to talk to you about Abraham and Moses today. I don't want you to get confused. A lot of times when I go back in the Old Testament, I want to if you say, Pastor, you're being redundant, there are people here that are just learning their Bibles. I'm not saying you don't know your Bible. I'm saying you're just learning your Bible. And sometimes you've got to be, have a little history lesson to remember what's going on. When you talk about Abraham, he, what Abraham did, he led to a future blessing for the people. In Genesis chapter 12, he, the Lord had said to Abram, go from your country your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on the earth will be blessed because of you. Now, when I read this, I want you to know this is a powerful statement that God declared. And when he opened his mouth and he said it to Abraham, then we go to the book of Galatians and we find out we as a people have been grafted into that, that blessing. So you have the same blessing that Abraham has. So if I told you that anybody that you bless is going to be blessed, anybody that curses you, they're going to get cursed. You've got to stand and believe that. Can I get an Amen. I can't make you believe it, but you've got to get to a place in your life where you believe it. The purpose of blessing is so important. I, I, don't, I do not. You already know this. If you sneeze around me, I do not say bless you. I do not think a sneeze warrants a blessing. It comes from the idea of releasing uh, mucus and snot out of your face. And there were those that believed that when you sneezed, devils came out of you. So when you sneeze, they would say, God bless you to stop you from inhaling the devil back in you. So I don't say bless you. So if that bothers you, let me just go ahead and help you. It's going to keep bothering you because I ain't saying it to you. So people will sneeze and look at me. Waiting on the preacher to bless them. And I'll look at them and I'll say, come out of there. And you know what happens after one sneeze? There's usually a second. And then that sneeze, they hit that second sneeze. When I say, come out of there, they sneeze again. I go, there it is. Now, I ain't asking you to be me or even think all the time like me. But I look at things and I think to myself, when I bless people, I really want to bless them. Amen. When these graduates go, I want them blessed. Amen. I want people in this house blessed. The word blessed is to consecrate with favor, to celebrate with praises. When you bless somebody, you're celebrating at a wedding. Amen. You celebrate what's going on. To bless means to speak well to others about someone else. Amen. When I talk about somebody else, I want to be a blessing about the one I'm talking about. Therefore, it takes the gossip out of my life. 
Amen. So my blessing is, uh, a typical Hebrew blessing would be, may God consistently do good in your life. Say that with me. May God consistently do good in your life. We want it to be consistent. The purpose of blessing, first, was to protect you from potential harm. Amen. The second was to protect you into what we would call a prophetic future. In other words, what God already had designed for you. Now, many of us, we don't walk in our prophetic future. You know, we'll, we fall. There's that failure. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And though he fall, amen, God will uphold him, pick him back up again. But our, what God has for us in our future is so important. To perpetuate your purpose on the earth. Everybody here was born with a purpose. Everybody here was given a purpose. The joys in life is discovering it. Amen. You may try something and it don't go well. I've heard somebody told me this week, I don't like my job. Now, I ain't asking y'all what you like about a job because the J-O-B brings the M-O-N-E-Y. Amen? Gives you a future. Gives you something to hold on to. And, and I, I spoke to this young man about that and I said, you know what? I, I calculated over the last, I've been pastor now 30 years. I have preached over 5,000 sermons. But one of the things that happened in my life, I discovered my purpose. And in discovering my purpose, I love my work. You work your job till you find your Purpose, amen. So you got to stay after. So to perpetuate your purpose and to prosper you. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow with it. I still believe in my heart that God wants everybody to prosper. That don't mean big house. That don't mean fine vehicles, amen. To prosper just simply means I got enough to deal with life. Amen, I'm prosperous, I'm blessed. God favored my mind's right, amen. I can handle the struggles of the day. So the power of blessing in Deuteronomy 33, 1, and this is the blessing where with Moses... So now we've gone from Abraham. Now Moses is after Abraham. Everybody say after. Don't get the old men mixed up. There's Abraham, and he had, he had a whole crew. Matter of fact, from Abraham's bunch, amen, came 12 tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel. So here's Moses, and he's leading them for 40 years. Now I like Moses. I like him a lot because he dealt with people on a daily basis. Sometimes we deal, pastors will deal with people on a Sunday, and that's all they get, and the people love them because they only deal with them on a Sunday. But what if you had to be with me 24-7? I promise you there would be things about me that you would finally admit he's human. Somebody give me an amen. Amen. I'm telling you the truth right now because it doesn't happen in every church. Sometimes folk walk in, walk out, and they don't realize. But to be with folk in a lot of times with our lives, it seems to be that way. I'm with a lot of people all the time. And, the, and this is the blessing where with Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. Before he died, he blessed them. Now, I don't know what he did up until then. I think a few times Moses wanted to curse them. He was mad at them. He is upset with them. But it was the man of God in their life that caused the, the uh, when they lifted the snake up on the pole, it stopped the curses that killed all the people. It was the man of God there that uh, Korah, when Korah got aggravated, he said, hey, we holy too. We, got, we, we preach too. We can do this too. Mo, I don't think, Moses is what I call a reluctant leader. Pastor David, he reluctant. He had a speech impediment. He struggled with stuff. God gave him miracles all the time, but he was just reluctant. I don't want to have to lead this much. And he was an humble man. Amen. They say he had a lot of humility about it. But there came a time when he got tired of dealing with it too. But then at the end of his life, he said, I want to bless them. The blessing is spoken in a moment of transition. Ladies, you're going through a transition. Transition often causes friction. Hear that again. Transition will cause friction. I take my foot across this floor real fast and carpet, and I touch it, pow. You ever been shocked on carpet? You ever been shocked because you got shocked? Huh? If you hadn't, you've never peed on a, on a, on a fence. Uh, okay, that was wrong. I should have said that. I, it, was, it was a BB gun I laid on the fence, and I got popped. I, I love when people are playing with tasers. My daughter's in a, she's a, um, a canine sergeant in a prison, and she has to get shocked uh, in order to know what a taser feels like. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, well, you know, but she got to get, sh- I got the video of her getting shocked and hitting the floor. And, uh, uh, and then, but the joy of that is because you get to turn around and do it to others. <laughs> Amen. You get to watch them go through it. But blessing, the blessing is spoken in a moment of transition during time of friction. Moses on this same day will peer into a possession that he himself will never inhabit. Let me speak to you as a dad and a grandpa. 
I'm praying that my children will inhabit places that I will never see. And I'm asking God to bless them, that even though I'll be gone from this earth, that God will bless them and bless people in this house. See, it's not natural for you to uh, stay here forever. But you got to believe God for your kids and your grandkids. Can I get an amen? Amen. So that's what Moses did. He's going to stand on the mountain. He's going to peer into a promise that it took him 40 years to get to that he's never going to enjoy. But one day he'll come back to that mountain with Jesus later on. You know that. On the self-same day, he releases a blessing to the ones that will. Everything will be new. The steps of a good man are ordered. Amen. So here he goes. When they march, the ark will no longer be in the center of the camp. Remember the ark? It's that golden thing. You remember Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's got the, the the golden cherubs there, the angels touching wings there inside the presence of, the, of God. They used to carry it in the, in the middle. They used to carry it in the middle to make sure it was guarded. Moses said, nah, uh this time we're going to put the presence out front. We're going to make sure you follow the presence. One of the great things, and I felt it when I came in here, the presence of God. He, when two or three gather together, there I am in the midst. You can feel his presence in his house. So he said, it's going to be in front, and I want you to give it some space between it and the people. I want you to follow the presence. Moses then begins to release a blessing of movement, of motion, of manners, and momentum to the 12 tribes. And I'm only going to mention a couple of them. Amen. But Moses blessed them because of his willingness to walk with them through the wilderness. Do you know who you bless the most? Those that have been with you through stuff. Amen. Those that labored with you and worked with you and walked with you and ate with you, hunted with you, fished with you. Amen. Built with you. They've been with you through it. And because of that, you want to bless them. So Moses, and that's the kind of person I can take a blessing from. Amen. Somebody I've worked with. I Listen, we got preachers trying to prophesy and pray over us. They don't even believe in us. I be, I'm very careful who I bring in this house because they have to believe in the same thing I do toward the people of this house. Amen. I want them to bless the people people in this house. Amen. So they walk through it. It's very important. I, in my life, I have received sayings from preachers and others. I can go to conference. Bless you, pastor. But you, you, I appreciate you saying that. I chew. I chew. I chew. But you ain't walked where I've walked. You ain't been where I've been. You've not dealt with the offenses like I have. But when I meet a man, that's walked through that, or a woman that's walked through that, and they say, bless you, now that means something. Somebody that, that's had to bury people that they loved, walk hand in hand with people that have struggled with diseases, amen, and loved them and just kept pressing. That's the kind of person I want to I don't want to hang out with a celebrity that stands up in a pulpit and preaches and slides off toward the back, amen. I don't want that. I want somebody that's been there with me, amen. I, you know, when I ride scooters, it's always with somebody that's rode for a while and been down like I have. If you know, listen, it, it, there's only two types of people that ride motorcycles, those that haven't gone down yet and those that are going to go down. And you just got to learn how to go down. Amen. I just come to this church a couple of years ago, and I come around that curve. The car cut me off. I laid that bike down and shoved it away from me. I slid along the asphalt, skimped my, uh, my, clothes, I mean, my shirt here off, bleeding underneath, get up. Richard Golightly was with me, picked my bike up, rode it into here, front ends all cattywampus, fractured, busted. I rode my sleeve so nobody could tell I was bleeding, preached, got home that night, put my bike up, preached Wednesday night in New Caney. Then after all that, I looked at my wife and said, hey, I wrecked my bike yesterday. <laughs> you know what I did? I gave her two cool days that she didn't have to deal with me wrecking my bike. Amen. I had to get it fixed and painted and stuff like that, but it was my choice. But those that, that I've been with, and it wasn't, it wasn't about a year or so later, Richard went down on his bike, and he was able to feel what I feel. Amen. And, and, and I mean that in love, but I'm just telling you that there's something about going and enduring life with people, handling life with people, amen, that makes you, a, a, when they bless you, you really feel the blessing. Amen. You know you're blessed. When I go to the hospital and I pray for people and I leave a bandana with them, you know why I do that? Because I've been in the hospital. Amen. I, I stayed in the hospital with surgery on this foot of mine when they fused it together. And I was down there in Birmingham, Alabama. I fit 14 years old. And a pastor and my best friend came and visited me and brought me a, 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 a hamburger from McDonald's. You say, well, that ain't nothing. Listen, a hamburger to me Raised up on Wheeler Mountain was like heaven. Amen. Brought that hamburger, that, that quarter pounder in there. But not only that, they came and saw me in the hospital. I never forgot it. 
I never forgot it. So now when I get a chance, and I've been in the hospital a few times, I always go to, I want to see people. If I can, if I can't, I hope to send somebody else. But I go in, I want to bless them, man, because I know what it's like to lay in there day after day and deal with people who won't let you sleep. And you know, every time they come in, they ask you how you're sleeping, and you say, I can't sleep because y'all keep coming in and cutting the light on. So let me get, get, I was not planning on going anywhere near that. The, the blessing here. So he looks over the tribe of Reuben, amen, and he blessed him. He said, I want you to live and not die. He said that to Reuben. Then he walks over to, to Levi. Levi, the, the Levites, they're, they're the worshipers. He says, they shall put incense before you. And I love this. He gave them a prophetic word, incense. There's going to be worship in your life. Then he looked at Benjamin. I love Benjamin. If you've ever studied any of the tribal leaders, study Benjamin. Left-handed, ambidextrous wolf boy. That's what he was. He was insatiable about his eating. There's something about him. He, he's ambidextrous, could use both hands. He could sling a stone with this hand, sling a stone with that hand. Amen. Ravenous wolf boy. Uh, my youngest son, I named him Judah for praise eventually. Amen. And Benjamin. Amen. Ambidextrous wolf boy. It's, it, he just, it, and, and you name a kid something, be careful what you name it. I got a friend. I love this man. He'll be preaching for us in October. Pastor Rick Hawkins. I'll tell you a little something about Rick, Pastor Rick. Pastor Rick lost his eyesight in one of his eyes, and you don't know it unless I tell you, when he was a teenager. Amen. So, yeah, he can see out of one eye. And I mean, he rides Harleys. And, and I was with him in uh, San Antonio, and he went and got on a horse. And it was funny because the horse had one eye. All right. And, and that horse flung him around and threw him. And I asked him what the horse's name was. They said, Widowmaker. I said, y'all need to name that horse something else because he just about killed my friend. Amen. Be careful what you name an animal. Be careful what you name your kids. Be careful what you call your kids. Amen. Be careful with that. I'm going to get into that in a minute. So Joseph, he gets to Joseph, and he blesses the tribe of Joseph. He said, let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph and upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brothers. So even Moses knew that there was a separation in, in the tribe, Joseph being in the pit to the palace, to the prison, and back to the palace again. And then he gets to Judah. And we love Judah. Judah is, that, is the praisers. They're the loud ones, man. There's some, send Judah first, the Scripture declares. Send praise. Why do we praise before we preach? Because praise goes first. Amen. Praise has got to be in the house. Praise does something. Praise invites the presence of God. Praise ignites something inside of you. You praise when you're at a ball game. When the Astros win six straight, you're giving God some praise. My son was at that game yesterday. Amen. I'm supposed to be and got stuck in traffic. Either way, let's get back on the word. Now, this is the blessing of Judah, he said. Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him unto his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him, and be thou his help to him from his enemies. The voice of Judah. So here's a concept that the Scripture lays out about the spoken word in relation to the significance of both cursing and blessing. Now, pay attention to your pastor here. According to Old Testament thoughts and patterns, the spoken word had the power of its own fulfillment. In other words, you didn't have to sign a contract. Matter of fact, you didn't even have to shake hands. You had to be careful what you say. We've lost this in this generation. We say things. There are certain musics that I hear that is so cursing, so derogatory, so uh, it demeaning toward women. I'll hear it, and I go, that, that's not good, man. I'm, and then you sing it, and you don't even realize what you're singing. You're in a, a, th uh, a, 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 a ball game somewhere, and you hear it, and you go, oh, that's not, that's awful. Amen. I mean, country music's bad enough, but this, some of this other stuff is awful if you get to see the words. So according to it, spoken word had the power. The word once spoken assumed a history of its own. Listen to me. When you say certain things, it has a history to it. I still remember things my father said. It has a history to it. Amen. It speaks to me. Almost a personality of itself. Words of blessing or cursing have the same power of self-fulfillment. When we started this message, the steps of a good man are ordered. So I read that. I say, okay, God ordered my steps. And though I fall, he's going to lift me back up. That word is for everybody here. Amen, to hold on to. So the example, when Isaac blessed Jacob rather than Esau, he could not recall the blessing. It existed in history. 
Now, let me, again, try not to confuse you here. But we've done dealt with Abraham. We've talked about Moses. But let's back up in between there and find the son of Abraham, Isaac. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, Jacob's name was later changed to what? Israel. Okay, now there were two boys, Jacob and Esau, twins at birth. Now, we read that Esau's older. Now, I meet twins that go, I'm older than you. Six minutes older. You're going to hold that over their head for the rest of their lives. Amen. It was a C-section, and they happened to grab you first. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I'm, I hear it all the time when I talk with twins. Amen. But here we find that Isaac is the dad. Rachel's the mom. She got two boys, Esau and Jacob. Esau loved the woods. He was, you know, if you hang in the woods long enough, you smell musky, smelly. There's something about it. And Jacob, he was a, hung out in the house a lot, and he's pale-skinned and cute. She loved him. Careful, mama. Genesis 27, 27. And he came near, speaking of Jacob, and he smelt him. Isaac smelt of his raiment. So what happened here? Mama, Esau's out. She knows daddy's dying. He can't see. So he's going to be a, he got to give the blessing of the family there. So she puts a skin on him to make him smelly. Now, I, I read this. I read this and I say to myself, Self, this ain't fair. Hello? It ain't fair. I mean, Esau's the oldest. The oldest gets the blessing. Is that right? Sergio, is that right? The oldest gets the blessing. And, and, I mean, you got two boys. You know what I'm talking about here. But one is a little more favored, and one has a little more God in them. One of them has a little more desire to do the right thing here. So the, so the Scripture says that, that she puts a skin on him, and he smelt him, amen, of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field, which the Lord has blessed. You smell like dirt, boy, and God blessed the dirt. Amen, so I bless you. Therefore, God give you, and listen to what he said, the dew of heaven, that's going to bring forth fruitfulness and the fatness of the earth amen prosperity plenty of corn and wine let people serve you and nations bow down to you be lord over your brothers and let your mother's sons bow down to you talk about esau here curse be everyone that curses you and blessed be he that everyone that bless you. Now, that word was not written down other than later was recorded for us to know. But when he said that, that blessing went out. <clears throat> he could not retract it. He couldn't change it. He, uh, the only thing that could happen here is for Esau to accept it. Amen. If Esau would have accepted it, we wouldn't have the issue with the Jews and the Muslims. Y'all know your history? But there was no accepting there. So there was issues that took place with this dividing here. So be careful what you say over your kids. Watch what you say. Watch what you call them. You call them derogatory names, that's got history with it. You get mad at them, I know we all get upset with them, and we say things that we can't recall, God help us all. But and maybe at that moment, there needs to be an apology. There needs to be something said, because I don't mean that. Amen. I'm careful what I call my kids. I've always been that way. Now, I know I called my daughter George her whole life, but she never took it as, as anything gender affirming. Can I get an amen? My, she's all woman. I'm going to tell you that right now, but she can whoop any boy in this house. Uh, second, I also called my other daughter who's in uh, Jordan right now doing mission work, Wilbur, her whole life. When she graduated from Oral Roberts University with a bachelor's degree, it was announced Jaleesa Wilbur. They announced it from the state, and I'm thinking to myself, God help me. <laughs> but I always have done that, enchilada, burrito. I mean, I've, I've named kids in this church. You know, I ju you just say, but they're affectionate. But if I ever thought it was going to hurt somebody, amen, you know, you, you have to be careful. Just got to be careful. And, and then it, you got to take it in the spirit in which it was intended. Was it, were they kidding? Amen. Did they really mean something by that? Uh, you know, some of you can't help being redhead. You're just redhead. Amen. Right, Justin? you just redhead. No hair. But he can take it. He's in the youth ministry here. He knows what's going on. He's got to put up with stuff. 
Genesis 27. Now, how did Esau handle it? And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. Again, hate, anger, hate, bitterness, murder. It all works that way. So, yeah, you can be angry, but don't sin. Don't let it go down. Deal with it. Anger. Anger leads to one thing, then it leads to bitterness and hatred, and then murder. And that's where, and, and Esau chased him. He went after Jacob. If you know the story, he went after him. He was upset with him. Let me ask you this question. Was it Jacob's fault? Whose fault is it? Mama. Mama, mama, mama. Be careful how you promote your children. Amen. Make sure you've heard from God. Amen. Because that's what she did here. And it caused it caused a rip. Now, I can't, you can't go back and change it. It is what it is. He became Israel. He became the nation. God blessed. You know what God did? God blessed him. And that little nation has gone through literal. They've been destroyed and slaughtered and moved and, and, and exiled and be, been slaves for 400 years and, and back into slavery and, and de dealt with uh, in the early 1900s with, with, the, with Germany and uh, the, the slaughter of the Holocaust. And yet God has his finger on that little nation. And I sit over here and I'm amazed how there are still people that act like they don't matter. They shouldn't be a nation. They shouldn't be a people. Have you forgot your Bible? Now, listen, I'm not, I'm not Jewish. I'm a Gentile. I carry the same weight they do. They don't even realize the weight they carry. If they turn toward Jesus, my goodness, look what would happen. It would be absolutely amazing. I got to start closing up here. Amen. So the voice, there's a voice here. Deuteronomy 33, 7. And this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, hear the voice of Judah. It's in our praise, how we praise. Amen. The voice to call aloud, to claim, to proclaim, to sing, or to thunder. A generation, this, this generation is intrigued with sound. I mean, you, if you get in your vehicle, you got sound. If you're working out, with, I'm, I go work out a couple times a week if I can. Almost everybody in there is listening to music. Music is such a big part. They got to hear sound. There's something about it. We're a generation. We, we love music. It sings. We got American Idol. America's got talent. We got the mask. We got the voice. We, we love that, man. And we enjoy watching voices being judged, voices competing, voices signed to contracts, voice, the sound produced and uttered through the mouth as a speech or song, an instrument or medium of expression to voice. As Tony was singing, the voice when I, as Josiah was singing, the voice when I, there's something about the voice, a right of expression. Uh, when you, vo you can voice your opinion, to have a voice, influential power. Now listen to me, you graduates, this is very important. Everyone can have an opinion about your life, and believe me, they will. But not everybody should have influence in your life. Be careful who you let have influence in your life, whose voice means something to you. Some people's voices will mean something. Other people's voices, that's just a voice. Amen, it's an opinion. Everybody got an opinion. Some folk got two. We came into a time of voice activation. I can get into my vehicle now and talk on my phone without touching my phone. It's voice activated. There was a day 30 years ago, 25, 30 years ago, remember right before you went to bed, you could do this. You'd go into people's houses, and they were so excited. Now you can talk. You can talk to fictitious what are them fictitious things called? Alexa. There's that other one. Who? Siri. I got one called Bixby. Every time she tries to talk, I shut her off. I don't want to hear it. I'm driving my car, and she starts telling me where to turn. I got people drive into the camp out in New Caney. How'd you get here? She told me to. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you turn around and get back out of here because you're in the wrong place. She led you wrong. Amen. So you got to be careful to the voices you allow into your life. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Voice recognition, the ability to receive and interpret the dictation or to understand and carry out spoken requests. I can speak it on my phone. It'll start texting you. But if I don't talk right, you could get offended with the text that I send. Speech patterns. Hmm. Listen, Mark 10. I'm just going to start closing with this. Verse 46. 
They came to Jericho, and as he went out to Jericho with his disciples, speaking of Jesus, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, son of Timmy, sat by the highway side begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. In the Greek language, that word there is mercy, have mercy. He called Jesus mercy. Mercy, have mercy. Mercy, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. Hush up, hush up. And he cried the more a great deal. Son of David, have mercy on me. Mercy, have mercy. And Jesus stood still, commanded him to be called. They called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he's calling you. Come on over here. And he casting away his garment, his beggar clothes. Amen. He rose, he came to Jesus. And Jesus answered, said, What is it that you want me to do? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, go your way, your faith. You've got faith. You believe that this can actually happen. You don't have no doubt in your heart. Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. He turned around and followed Jesus. Remember, anytime you get well blessed or ministered to by Christ, keep following him. You stay with him till the bottle's empty. Amen. He won't be empty till you leave here. Blind Bartimaeus was saying, recognize me. Here's my voice. Today we want to proclaim a blessing. Amen. If I could have the graduates come up, Pastor Joseph, Pastor David, amen. I want you two to stand in front of me. What a day, huh? And I know you guys got in late last night and some of you, it was prom and all that other stuff. But we're here to proclaim a blessing. I want this to be a, a word that, I mean, literally years from now, you look back and you remember that these men laid hands on you and they asked God to bless you. Your parents want you blessed. Grandparents, family. You're going to go out. The world was not as cruel when I went out. It's abusive, man. It's mean. So won't you blessed? Proclaim publicly. First Peter 2, 9, but ye are a chosen generation. God chose you. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, peculiar. I say amen. That you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness, and God called you too out of darkness into a marvelous light. We're going to make a statement today. And ask God to bless them. Amen. Pastor Joseph, Pastor David, y'all lay your hands on these ladies. Church, if you'd stretch your hands this way, let's proclaim a blessing on our graduates. And listen, you know graduates, you can say their name. You can proclaim a blessing over them. So let's say it together. Lord Jesus, bless our sisters. We bless them with favor, protection, understanding, that you keep them. Use them for your glory. They're peculiar people. They've been called out. We bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We bless you. Pastor Joseph, come on up here. He, want, he might want to say something to y'all before I... Nailed it. One thing that he mentioned at the beginning of the service that I wanted to share is if you in, la in the last month of Forge, we've been digging into mental health. Um, and this last Wednesday was probably the hardest one of all. We talked about suicide. And I know, like, where are you going with this? We're talking about blessings. But stay with me. But when we talk about suicidal health, the biggest portion of why people get to that place is because it's a place of hopelessness. Right? It's a place that they've dug into that they don't see an out. Right? We all experience somebody in our lives or somebody that's, that's dealt with this. But for you guys, as you press forward, things are going to change. Right? It's not going to be it's all at once or any of that kind of stuff, but things are going to change. And you're going to have epic highs and you're going to have epic lows. But the one constant is the hope of Jesus. Right? If we want to find ourselves out of those places, we got to remember that Jesus can do that for us. And he's the only constant that won't change. His love for you will never change. But he has a hope in you. And you have to have a hope in him. And cling to him no matter where you go, what you do. Let his presence show you the path. And continue to cling to him no matter what your environment does. Because he's always there. 
So that's the only thing I would charge you guys with. I uh, love you guys. We do have a gift for you. Would you guys rise and get a hand to our seniors? We love you guys so much. invite you to give today uh, just give freely out of your heart and many of you have been taught about tithing so many of us do that unless you just want to give I want you to give our servant leaders are coming up if you need to tie their offering envelope it's in your your pew Sunday we just call it that but what it is we're inviting bikers and I wish we could do more here but we have all that property out there, so we're inviting people to come out to New Caney. We're going, we're going to have service here. Memorial Day week. I know a lot of you go out of town Memorial Day weekend. But I think it's so important to recognize that there were men and women 